and welcome to another exciting episode of the Homeland Security Training Institute podcast. That's HSTI podcast. This is your host, Tom Brady. And today we're going to be covering an important subject as it relates to public safety, and that's emergency communications. And joining me on the program today is Brian Tegmeyer. Brian is the director of DUCOM, which is DuPage County's Emergency Communications Center. Hey, Brian, how are you? Hi, Tom. I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Thanks for joining me today. No problem. I'm really interested to talk to you about DUCOM and the things that uh, DUCOM does. Um, let's start off, Brian, if you could tell me a little bit about you know your background and your career at DUCOM. Sure. Um, my, my background starts, uh, I've got over 20 years in public safety communications. Um, I think I'm fortunate from my career point of view that I, I started as a 911 telecommunicator. Um, so my earliest uh, role in this in this profession was actually answering the 911 calls. I did that for about three or four years before being promoted um, into supervisory role. And then I took my first director job in Lake County, Illinois. And I've now been the executive director of DUCOM. Um, for over 10 years, and DUCOM is the largest consolidated 911 center in Illinois, and uh, we serve a large portion of DuPage County, public safety agents. Yeah, you know, and, and I'm really interested in that, Brian, because, you know, being the largest emergency communication center in, 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 in the state, um, that's pretty amazing to me. Talk a little bit about what DUCOM's main role is. What, what, what do you do at DUCOM? Sure. Uh, DUCAM's role is to be a PSAP, and that's an industry term called a public safety answering point. Um, We are a 911 communication center. This is the place that 911 calls are received and answered and processed for emergency dispatch for police, fire, and EMS. Um, From our point of view, most citizens think that if they've got an emergency, they're calling their local police department or fire department. But the reality is um, DUCOM has been around for over 41 years, and we've been a consolidated center for a a significant portion of DuPage County during that time. So if you're a resident in Glen Ellen or Wheaton and you call 911, you're actually reaching DUCOM, not your individual community. And we take those calls, and then we process them and dispatch the appropriate emergency response, either police, fire, or EMS. Yeah, Brian, you know, you mentioned consolidated uh agency. And, you know, I'm interested in that because now tell me a little bit about, didn't the state of Illinois recently require that um, emergency communication centers consolidate? Is that, was that something that Illinois pushed for or was there regulation that was passed? Yeah, there was a law that was passed in 2015, uh, Public Act 99-0006, that created a statewide 911 administrator office within the Department of State Police and had a lot of other parts uh, of the bill that impacted 911. Um, The first part was requiring consolidation, and the the specifics of it get very technical, but basically it was looking to consolidate um, 911 centers that were serving a small population and to make them more efficient and, and to use more resources. Now, that didn't have a huge impact on us here in DuPage County because DuPage County had already been working for the last, uh, at that time, eight or nine years on consolidation. Over 10 years ago, DuPage County had over 18 911 centers actively operating, and we are now down to four. Mm. Well, that's interesting. I, I guess logistically that makes a lot of sense. Um, since DUCOM's already been doing that, obviously not much impact with you. But what about, say, somewhere downstate, a, a smaller emergency, emergency communication center or a, maybe a, a police department that were doing their own dispatch. Are, are they also part of the requirement? Yeah, Tom, they are. And and I think that's maybe the target audience is that, you know, for that bill was there were a lot of um, single agency centers, um, not unlike where I began my career in, in the southern portion of Cook County, where, um, you know, a police department might have a dispatch or what we would call one or two seat dispatch center where there might be a single telecommunicator on duty. You got a couple of those, you know, five or 10 of those around in a single County. And you look at the, you know, the economy of scale, the equipment that's needed in those facilities and everything else. And it becomes obvious that consolidation works. This is also just an area where because organizations like DUCOM and other dispatch centers, especially in the 
uh, suburban area have been consolidated for so long, it was a, a model and a path to follow. And what impact does that have, Brian, on the consolidation piece? How What impact does it have on, on people who use 911? Uh, does that have any impact on them at all? You know, it really doesn't. Um, you know, obviously, I think, you know, you get to pool resources, you get to have the newest of technologies, the best training, the best pay and competitiveness for the centers that operate. Um, if there's any drawback, uh, you know, maybe you're just not as familiar with um, every citizen that might call and in a very small, especially when you referred to Southern Illinois earlier, you know, a single call taker there might be familiar with regular people that contact emergency services more often. You know, some of that is lost, but it's it's overcome with technology. It's overcome with being able to put notes in a in a computer system that'll pop up information about this person's house or that person's you know medical condition, so that we can still provide the same or higher level of service to the citizens. You know, you mentioned uh, new technology, Brian, and I know that that's a a, a big change or it's, it's a continuing change in emergency communication. W- one thing I wanted to to ask you about was the Smart 911 program. And I know DuPage County has it. Um, We've had some presentations on this um, at the Homeland Security Education Center here at the College of DuPage. Can you talk briefly about Smart 911 and what benefit that would have to somebody to register for that? Yeah, you know, that's an excellent point. Thanks for bringing that up. In DuPage County, the 911 board um, has provided this service called Smart 91 to all of our citizens, and, and not not just people that live in DuPage County. Anyone who who works in DuPage County, lives in DuPage County, or or travels a significant portion of their time in DuPage County can register for this service. It's free, and what it does is, you know, when 911 started, we had information from when you called your home, your name, your address, your phone number, and whose police jurisdiction you were in, whose fire jurisdiction. But that was based on the original landline phones. Well, most people have gotten away from landlines. We know that wireless 911 calls account for about 75 to 80% of our incoming 911 calls. And uh, many people, especially uh, the younger population, have eliminated landline phones in their homes. That means we only, at a 911 center, only receive the callback number of that phone if a call is placed to 911. We can map it. And, and put it on a map, but we don't know the person's name. We don't know where they live. We don't know where they work. We don't have a lot more information. Smart 91 becomes a database for citizens to enter that additional information in, and it will present itself only when that person were to call 911. So if you register your cell phone and you take that cell phone and make a 911 call, then a whole bunch of additional information can become available to a 911 call taker. Um, and that can be the important. That could give us uh, important medical information. It could give us information on, you know, where you are, are located, that if you were calling in, the, in a neighborhood, you know, we, accuracy of cell phones can get us pretty close, but might not tell us exactly what unit or apartment, especially in a multifamily dwelling where it's apartment complex or something like that. This would tell us what unit you're likely in or where you work uh, if we were trying to locate you from a 911 call. Um, and it, it's had a lot of impact as far as in cases where it's helped us, um, you know, get to the caller in their time of need. And the most important thing about that, obviously, is that the information is there, so it, it, it takes away any ambiguity when people are responding. And again, it's also a free service, so it's, it's well worth it to, to sign up for Smart 911. Right, and you can do that just by going to smart911.com um, and register for that service, and it'll let you know that, that it's available in your area. Um, and once you register, you're registered for the program that's actually a national program. So if you're traveling on vacation and you make a 911 call and that area is covered by Smart 911, your information will come up there too. So yeah, it's a great, great tool, and, and we're continually trying to get the word out about it. Well, it sounds very smart. So it's named uh, very appropriately, Smart 911. I, I, I like that. Yeah. Brian, you know, you're also an educator, and you teach the 911 telecommunicator certification program at the College of DuPage. Tell me a little bit about your passion for, for teaching. 
Yeah, I, I've had that uh, passion and drive ever since becoming a 911 telecommunicator. I think the first role that I had that really allowed me to embrace that passion was training other telecommunicators. So a really important role in any 911 center is what's called the communications training officer or CTO. And so I started my training by training CTOs uh, as a CTO training new telecommunicators. But then I wanted to do more, so I got involved with a regional training service called NEMERT that's um, one of the... Uh, Illinois Law Enforcement Training Standards Board uh, regional training units. And um, in working with NEMER uh, over 15 years ago, I was teaching a 40-hour basic uh, curriculum with them. Uh, when the opportunity came for a College of DuPage's program to start a telecommunicator certification, I was extremely interested to become one of the faculty to uh, to help teach that course. It's a great opportunity for people in the community who have thought about this as a career or, or just want to learn more about the role of an I-1 telecommunicator to take this course and learn about all of the things that an I-1 telecommunicator needs to know and then even get to practice some of the skills that are needed for the job in our uh, enhanced 911 lab that the College of DuPage has on campus where we can simulate 911 calls, radio traffic, and a computer-aided dispatch computer program to show the entire 911 workflow. And Brian, how important is it to do those types of practical exercises where you're actually handling calls? I mean, from, from your standpoint as an educator, um, how much impact does that have to the to the educational opportunity for each student? Well, it definitely enhances the educational uh, opportunity for the student by, by giving them a way to practice it. I think it's also got a real-world application for many of those students who are looking to decide, is this a career I want? They get to really practice it, see whether, you know, are these special skills needed to be a 911 telecommunicator, the ability to multitask, think fast, work under pressure, and be accurate? Are these things that I can possess? And there are students that, you know, have totally mastered uh, the lab in their training at the, at the college and then are out there in the job market and, and many who have actually gotten employment as a 911 telecommunicator. And there's others that then realize, you know what, maybe this isn't for me and before I quit a job or, or, or try to do something else that they've, they've practiced those skills and they really got an understanding of what the role is. And usually then they're just so much more appreciative of the work that all the 911 telecommunicators do out there. You know, Brian, the I know the job of the telecommunicator. I, I mean, I, I understand it a lot more than I did uh, a couple of years ago before the program started at the College of DuPage. And when I was in law enforcement, I think I, maybe I've mentioned this before, that, you know, it was a, a voice on the other end of the radio. But it gave me a sense of that there was someone there that had my back if, if I needed them. Um, I know much more about the, the, the job now, but this is not a job that's for everyone. So could you talk a little bit about what skills are needed to be an effective telecommunicator for someone who might be interested? Yeah, and I think we just, you know, hinted at some of those things is, is that there's not this perfect answer. People ask me all the time, well, I don't want to be a telecommunicator. I mean, what do you think? Well, I don't know. You know, because I can't just tell by meeting someone whether they'd be great at the job or not. They've got to have the ability to have uh, multitask, to hear things. Hearing is extremely important and processing audio information is, is important. I, I anecdotally tell the story that, you know, can you sit and have a TV on in the one room, a radio on maybe in another room and hold a conversation and still pick up on information from all three of those sources. Um, that's the type of skill that a telecommunicator use. They're on the phone with somebody, they're listening to a radio and they have to be aware of their coworkers around them who may be calling out for them to provide additional information. That's probably one of the the hardest parts. Then it requires what I also refer to as an uncommon common sense. You've got to have a grounded nature about yourself. People call us for a variety of reasons. Most people, when they're calling 911 during an emergency, are calling us on our worst day. You know, they're calling 911 because a loved one is hurt or has been injured or sick um, or a serious crime has gone on. And, and those are very difficult calls. We have to have telecommunicators that can stay calm and focused and obtain the information needed to get uh, the first responders en route to that location. So it's extremely important that somebody has that common sense, has that patience, has that calmness about their ability while being able to do all those things. And then the other part of it that is also a challenge for uh, finding people who want to do this job is the work itself. It's a 24 by 7, 365 day a year job. In other words, 
Uh, telecommunicators have to work overnight shifts. They have to work on holidays and things like that. This is that true job that never closes. We never go away. 911 has to be here at all times for everyone. So finding a person that wants to do that is, is a challenge. Now, I will say conversely with all of those challenges, it can be a very rewarding job. The telecommunicator that can take pride in the fact that every time they answer the phone, they're helping someone, they can save a life, and they truly can. They can save a life. They can help a first responder. They can do that on a daily basis. Um, there's there's not many other jobs where you can feel like you're really part of something that big. It sounds like it's a very impactful job for people that are, are well-versed in the training and, and adept at doing that. One of the things, Brian, I wanted to make mention of is that, I, and you could talk more about this, but the state of Illinois does not require a certification to become a telecommunicator. As, as I know it, the the only requirements is you have to have a high school diploma. Is there any movement to add a certification to the position within Illinois? I know that's something that you've been involved in in the past. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, it's sort of ironic. If you think about all the different things that are that are regulated within our state, um, you know, you need a license to cut hair, but the people answering your 911 uh, phone calls are not licensed within the state of Illinois. There's no minimum requirement of training, no certification. The challenge for this is to make sure that we can implement some new direction uh, of certification or training in Illinois. And there is work, there's committees, and and a lot of work going on with our public safety communications associations, APCO and NINA, to try to introduce legislation. But with the changes of consolidation, changes of funding regulations and and such, um, this has been an upheld battle. We, We think we're getting closer to moving something forward, but in the meantime, I think the big takeaway is making sure that 911 centers invest in the training of their telecommunicators. They use programs like How to Do Page to make sure people have got a minimum level of training and that they work to meet those those training levels wherever they are. Brian, one final question I had, and this is more along the lines of you know new technology. And I know in in your world of the uh, telecommunicator. The technology changes uh, very quickly. What, what about like texts or videos? Is someone able to send those to the communi- communication centers? Yeah, text that I want is part of the overall rollout of what we call Next Generation I One, which was another part of the law that passed in Illinois. And that um, Next Generation I One is the ability for a nine one center to receive all types of input from different devices, including. Uh, telematics from your vehicle if you're in a car accident, that the car itself could tell us that you were in an accident um, to maybe video and things like that. But the first step is text and I want. It's deployment around the nation has been very uh, localized, regionalized, and and then a couple exceptions are there are a couple of states that have deployed text and I want. So in the state of Indiana, you can make a text and I want call anywhere in the state. In the Chicago area, it it has... um, there are some centers in some areas where you can text to 911, and there's many others where you cannot. In, in DuPage County and DuCamp specifically, um, we are making the upgrades to our 911 systems as we speak um, here today. We're making the upgrades and deploying the, the new phone system that will allow us to receive text to 911 in the near future. So um, a lot of us are working towards it if we're not there today, um, and our hope is is that we will have text to 911 everywhere in Illinois as soon as we can. Fantastic. Uh, Brian Tegmeyer, thank you so much for your time. Uh, Brian's the executive director of DUCOM here in DuPage County. And Brian, I want to thank you for your time today and a lot of great information. I think for anyone who's interested in becoming a telecommunicator, they, they just got all the answers to any question they would have. So thank you, Brian. No problem. Thank you for having me, Tom. You're welcome. Take care. For anyone who's interested in the program here at the College of DuPage, the Public Safety Telecommunicator Program, You can go to our website, which is www.cod.edu backslash HSTI. HSTI standing for, of course, Homeland Security Training Institute. You can go to our website and you can get more information on this program. It runs the full semester. And at the end, the student takes a certification exam through the Emergency Telecommunicator Certification and walks out of here with a certification. Granted, they pass the test at the end. So... Other than having their high school diploma, they have a certification, then they can go to agencies and they can apply for jobs. So very proactive program and a lot of information, uh, good information there on our website. 
Anyone else who has a question about the show or a topic that they'd like me to cover? HST, I have a question is where you can actually send in questions, suggestions, comments about the show. We want to hear your input. They can email me at bradyt145 at cod.edu. Please uh, email me and we'll make sure that we get answers to any questions or comments that you might have. Any suggested guests, please let me know because every week we try to have someone in here who works in public safety or has some type of a relationship or job along the lines of Homeland Security is what we try to offer every week. So that's our episode for this week. And we look forward to you joining us on our next episode. So until then, take care and stay safe.